Hey guys, welcome back to the Alliance Tournament. I'm CCP Rise, and I'm with Sir Squeebles, and we're about to watch Fearless Empire against Norm Mercenary Group to get us started after the break today. How's it going, Mr. Squeebles? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. Fantastic. Sorry for the short delay, guys. We broke a bunch of computers and had to restart them all, but everything's good now. Um, what do we uh, have on the field here? I see a succubus there on the screen. Tell us about the setups a little bit, Squeebles. Uh, yes, yeah, so on one team you're seeing a more traditional shield setup. Uh, that's on the side of Noir. They're fielding Slepnir, Slepnir, Gila, 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 which is something that we've seen before. Um, some interesting frig support with the succubus. There is a harpy also of Xers for some added DPS and then worms as well. Yeah, and Fearless have something crazy. They've got the first Kronos of the tournament, I believe, uh, and then alongside that, like a, a small armor tinker with, I believe, their flagship get and a Proteus uh, Damnation Prophecy of Extra Navy issue. And uh, worth mentioning, Noir doesn't have any logistics at all, so this is a very high damage, high uh, kind of in-your-face sort of setup, and we're underway now. You see Noir started at zero on the beacon, and they're burning straight away down towards that uh, Fearless tinker. Have to see how their damage does against... Uh, Probably against that Armageddon or maybe the Lodge of Proteus to get things started. Yeah, you do already see the Vexor of Zoraeli taking damage. Um, he's at about two-thirds shields. It's not as much as they'd like to see early, and it looks like Maxwell and the Proteus is going to be the primary. Yep, going to try and break that logistics first, as Fozzie was saying before. Often that's the weakest link in these Tinker Chains. Looks like, actually, though, they may... Uh Go for the Vexter Navy issue. They, they had a web on that for a second, but the Proteus taking pretty pretty uh, heavy damage to start, although on the other side, Noir already lost a Vexter. They have no logistics, so they'll be bleeding ships this whole time. They need to make use of the DPS while they have it. And interestingly, unless I'm mistaken, that Proteus was boosting shields just a minute ago, like small amounts of shields, so I don't yeah. know, but it didn't really save him because he's dead. <laughs> You're right. I saw the uh, the boost effect there on the stream just before he went down. He is down now. A Slipner getting traded back pretty quickly here. Getting right next to that Kronos definitely puts them uh, up against a lot of DPS, even though there's not a lot of ships on this Fearless side. So two ships down now for Noir. Uh, without Logi, though, Fearless Empire probably going to be losing ships pretty quickly. This Vexter Navy issue especially with a pretty light tank. And that's a pretty significant portion of their DPS. This Kronos can only do so much, although they are chunking into this Slepnir. But if it gets down to this Kronos, uh, the Prophecy, the Damnation, uh, it looks pretty dark. And that's the case now, especially with that Geddon applying new pressure to the Kronos. You know, I'm, I think this could be really interesting as this goes late. As a second Slipner already goes down for Noir, not only do they not have Lodgy, but it looks like the tanks are pretty light because he went down really fast. Um, see what they go after next. Maybe the Vexor piloted by Sovereign. But in the meantime, uh, Fearless actually doing kind of okay. They only have a couple ships, but that Kronos is going to be a really big problem. If Noir loses uh, very much more of their DPS, it's possible that they just simply won't be able to break the Kronos, and he can kill these ships one by one no problem as they lose another Vexor. Yeah, interestingly, I had the Armageddon group with the wrong team. I was wondering how Armageddon <laughs> uh, synergized with the Gila, so no worries about that cap pressure on the Kronos. Uh, I'm sure he's less nervous now. Um, wow. But only two Gilas, yeah, that's, that's probably not going to be enough to eat through this substantial tank. I mean, the Geddon's going down for Fearless now. He's uh, getting into low armor, but the Noir tanks just seem really light. Their ships are, are going down really quick. I wonder uh, what the tank looks like on those Helas and Slipners. It, it seemed like they never even boosted as another Hela goes wow. down. Only a few ships left for Noir. It looks like Fearless is going to take this with the Kronos and this uh, kind of strange, uh, sh like, few pilot tinker here with their Geddon. If this is a flagship Geddon, which I actually don't have confirmed, I need to find that out, but if that's the case, this could be a really hurtful loss for them, even if they make it through the match. Well, at this point, just on points, uh, it's it's pretty secure. That Kronos is not going anywhere. Uh, this last Kila is going down. One of the, I believe it's the Harpy. Yes, the Harpy is right in the middle of the remaining part of this tanker, and he's going to sink as well. Uh, this worm might kite, uh, just sort of flaunting, but uh, yeah, there's not much hope for him to break a Kronos. Wow, ship's at this going point, down. Yeah, this I mean is a. Uh, they needed to go for the the mobile micro jump drive strat there and hope that the Kronos and the remainder of the team MJD'd out. They did not, though, and as that last room sinks, that's uh, an interesting match. Yeah, really strange. <laughs> uh, it seems like if Noir would have had uh, some Lodgy, maybe instead of those Vexors or something, they could have kept this match uh, maybe turning their way as things went a little later, but instead, 
uh, Fearless is the one who comes out up on top, um, having no problem cutting through this Noir team with that Kronos. Pretty cool to see that in play. I have to feel like Fearless is a little lucky that they brought a Kronos and then had somebody fly straight in on top of them. Um, yeah, that was an interesting decision. Uh, you see that it's kind of 50-50, honestly, with a lot of the Gila comps. Some people think that that shield resist bonus entitles them to just get right in the middle of the fight. Um, other teams play them a little more defensively. Uh, against a comp like this, you definitely hope that you've practiced the, the more kiting setup because getting on top of a Kronos is not a good life decision. Yeah, one one thing that makes, uh, I'm sure, added some urgency to the strategy for Noir is that that Kronos did have a bunch of smart bombs. So um, those Gila drones, even though they have a lot of HP, would eventually get chewed up um, by the smart bombs, making their damage even lower. I, they may have just felt they needed to get in and apply as much damage really as absolutely possible. But yeah, I mean... Really, really strange to fly up next to a Kronos, which just really is happy to have everything as near to it as possible, and especially because it's alongside a Tinker that really can't move across the field at all either. Right. And now we're seeing this uh, last remaining Succubus kind of uh, fly around here and maybe proving how uh, <laughs> how hard it would have been for Felis to deal damage to anything that was far away. They actually can't really do anything at all to the Succubus. They just have these big slow brick ships left and the uh, Kronos still actually in Bastion see if he oh. dro drops Bastion and tries to MGD around to catch the Succubus but that oh hurts. I hope he does I think that would end in a dead Kronos based on what we've seen so far um, <laughs> yeah this this Succubus pilot though is that's quite a nice move by him making sure that uh, they have plenty of time to loot the wrecks of his friends um, I, I don't know what to say about that comp though uh, the Gila comp, I mean, it's not the first time we've seen Gila's. It's not the last time we're going to see Gila's. Um, there's a couple common variations with a triple Gila, double slept mirror, that sort of thing with, with a little bit higher damage output. But um, it seems like a lot of people really are brawling in. And it's sort of strange to set up that way, given that these really sturdy armor tanks have been in the tournament since the start. Yeah, it is a pretty interesting decision. Uh, yeah, particularly against this composition, but... I don't know. Uh, I could see the brawling in being the. I think a lot of time when we end up with kite setups versus kite setups, um, getting getting being aggressive and trying to get on top can be a, a really good move. Like if it's healers versus healers and they're trying to, um, you know, get more damage than their opponents by closing in and getting tackles, that that makes a little more sense in this situation. It seems like um, it definitely just exposes you to all of the fearless uh, damage and e war, which. Um, if you can work around, you're better off trying, I think. I wonder, you know, in this match, if they would have at least given a shot to breaking the Proteus tank from range before going in. But um, they do have some big limitations. You know, the Vexors don't have a lot of uh, drones they can reload. So if they try that and then the Smart Bombs clear some of those drones off, um, they may give up the any chance of breaking that logistics at any point in the match. So... Interestingly, though, with the smart bombs, it's definitely something to consider, especially with the drone heavy metas that we've seen. But a lot of the popular drone ships do have an EHP bonus for their drones. So at first glance, you might say a couple of uh, large smart bombs would clear off a flight of heavy drones, but not from the Gila, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a 500% bonus to the tank of those drones. Um, hey. It's essentially like, there we go, finally down. <laughs> nice but it's job, essentially fearless. like trying to kill a uh, an assault frigate with two smart bombs, which is... Uh, a yeah. lengthy process. Absolutely. Anyway, nice match. Congratulations, Fearless Empire winning with a pretty bizarre setup. Good job to them. And we'll be back in just a few with Waffles versus Mortus.